so kafka is is yet another technology which which is similarly similar to cassandra it's a distributed system it deals with a lots and lots of data and it is but it is not a database we are going to see what exactly it is so basically why kafka we are going to see what what were what was the intuition behind creating kafka itself lecture is very popular these days a user interface will have so this is how a high level marcos microservices architecture looks like so there are microservices for each uh, handling uh, each uh, specific area of business domain as compared to the monolithic architecture which used to happen back back in the day where all of the systems all of the functionality was handled by a single uh, system here we have different uh, code running uh, there there could be different databases for each microservice as you can see here cassandra redis mysql mongodb as required by the that particular microservice so mon, uh, as i said comparison with monolithic architecture is it used to have a single data store uh, usually it could be uh, a mainframe system or it could be a relational database and the user interface business layer and data interface are all integrated well tightly integrated with each other so any change basically in any part of the architecture will impact a lot of area uh, and any change in the data model will also impact a lot of uh, complete uh, application so that was the ma main disadvantage of the monolithic architecture but it makes things very hard to scale or to change in microservices there are specific microservices which are talking with their specific data stores and then they those can be changed or uh, uh, independent of each other so th they're actually microservices are very very have proven very very beneficial so some of the advantages uh, it has very fast value delivery uh, it fix the fixes are very easy and fast to do uh, as well as new features experiments and in that increases confidence basically uh, yeah this is another nice pictorial representation of microservices uh, those are language independent so you can uh, have multiple programming languages to code your microservices each microservice in and that gives you additional flexibility depending upon your requirement uh, fault isolation because if there is some error or bug in this particular microservice it will not generally if you design it correctly if you it will not uh, <clears throat> impact other services it might impact the, the complete service but it is very easy to isolate that and, and get rid of it because uh, the code is very very manageable here as compared to this one pairs well with containers so it pairs very well with docker uh, methodology and terminologies it is very very scalable and flexible as uh, we have discussed because uh, each services are independent and lightly integrated with each other uh, that that gives you scalability and flexibility so event driven architecture so this is one more step going ahead of of the microservices architecture so event driven architecture is basically uh, in microservices architecture when there is a specific event occurs it triggers a lot of functionality and <clears throat> for example in in a system where there is a ordering these are the microservices ordering billing inventory shipping and those are handled by their own data stores and user interface interacts with each microservice independently and any uh, event triggered from let's say here from the user interface will will <coughs> create uh, some processes to run and there actually kafka comes into picture so because if we have a lot of microservices they need to talk with each other and there is a lot of data exchange that should happen and kafka exactly caters that requirement so what was the main motivation behind kafka so this is kafka was basically created at linkedin first of all this is how uh, this is taken from the linkedin uh, blog uh, this is how it used to look before introduction of kafka so each of these microservices or systems are connected to the other systems which which creates a lot of 
uh, interdependency and this is uh, so, so sometimes it's called as a spaghetti architecture which is which is not great to maintain and it is not at all scalable so that is a uh, very big limitation of of having this and this is a very common problem that a lot of organizations uh, will uh, face so if you have a united log based data streaming platform it results it can resolve so linkedin people realize that if, if we build a united log uh, data streaming system which which works like a united log and that can be shared by all the services then it can simplify the design greatly and this is where uh, kafka was invented so today uh, roughly around uh, not today uh, when like back in 2016 i guess uh, linkedin at linkedin there were 1400 broker kafka uh, in production 1.4 trillion messages per day and avro is is a um, is a uh, data representation language uh, so they use avro it's a specialized language we will probably talk about it uh, it works very well with kafka uh, and they have multiple use cases like message queue or Kafka can be because it's very very elegant design and simple use use case. It can be used as message queue or data bus. Uh, there is database uh, database replication can be handled with that with Kafka. Metrics uh, handling can also be uh, metrics can be handled very well. Logging is very natural to uh, Kafka use case. Web app tracking data and real time aggregation so the, some these are some of the use cases that linkedin themselves have uh, been using kafka for uh, very rapid growth uh, so ever since kafka was introduced it has seen very rapid growth and uh, ac acceptance from the industry so it we can say kafka growth exploding one third of all fortune 500 companies use kafka Top 10 travel companies, 7 out of top 10 banks, 8 out of top 10 insurance companies, and now 9 out of top 10 telecom companies already use Kafka. Some of the examples, uh, of course, are LinkedIn, Microsoft, Netflix, uh, have very, very big deployments of Kafka, and they process billions of messages per day. So, yeah, and this has resulted in widespread Kafka adaptation in industry. So why uh, Kafka? So some of the silent features of Kafka are stream processing. So basically, you can visualize it, visualize it as a stream processing engine, and it can real-time streaming data processing for real-time analytics. So or if there is a need of which is increasing day by day to process data in real time, Kafka works very well. Uh, for example, service calls track every call like. Uh, track service calls, IoT sensors, and also that sort of real-time processing. It is fast and scalable. So Kafka is very fast um, because of its simple architecture. Scalable, uh, you can, because it's a distributed system, you can scale it on the, on the fly, horizontally or vertically. Uh, the data is durable because data is stored on disk. Uh, even if a broker goes down, uh, the data is, is not lost. Uh, most importantly, it is very, very fault tolerant, uh, even because it's a distributed system and even at the cost of failure of few of the machines, it can function perfectly fine without uh, clients noticing the internal failures. And it is basically a published subscribe mechanism, messaging system, basically. So because it's a, what, what do we mean by published subscribe is once some data is published, to Kafka, it can be subscribed by n number of subscriptions uh, or n number of, number of subscribers. It is not point-to-point -point delivery. Uh, it is not only point-to-point -point delivery. It can cater for some piece of data created, can be uh, subscribed by unlimited number of subscribers, basically. And technically speaking, it works like a distributed log system. So you can visualize that as a log system, which is uh, handled in distributed manner. Where does the reliability and redundancy uh, it ha its reliability and redundancy come from? Is Kafka is often used instead of RabbitMQ uh, due to high throughput, reliable reliability and replication. So, because of data replication and redundancy, it is very very reliable. 
and it is very uh, very fastly replacing systems like RabbitMQ. So top 10 Kafka features again is durability as we have seen. Performance is very high, uh, very fast because of very simple design, zero downtime if, if managed correctly. Replication, uh, extensibility on the go without any downtime. Scalability caters the same thing. Fault tolerance uh, because uh, it's a distributed system and it is designed with failures in mind. High volume of data, it can handle very high volume of data. Uh, data transformations are also possible with the Kafka streams uh, functionality. Yeah, so talking a little bit about streams. So Kafka can work in combination with uh, others, other technologies, for example, Flume or Flink, Spark streaming, Storm, HBase, uh, Spark for real time analysis and processing of streaming data. So these are some of the other or uh, data streaming technologies which can which work very well with kafka and feed your data lakes with data streams so this is very natural use case for kafka uh, kafka supports message streams for uh, follow up analysis in hadoop or spark so because of large uh, adaptation of hadoop or spark it is very well integrated or it is built to integrate very well with those technologies kafka streaming can be used for real time analytics so the, uh, real time analytics is a very very huge use case uh, where kafka is considered as a very like primary uh, to go to tool uh, so hype where does the high performance come from so zero copy because it's uh, it it uses calls to the os kernel directly rather than jvm to move data very fast so it's called zero copy uh, feature batch data in chunks so it also uses text advantages advantage of batching data into chunks and end to end from producer to file system to consumer so the batch uh, or kafka basically it doesn't touch the data and it will directly treat the data as, as uh, raw bytes that that makes it high performance provide more efficient data compression and reduces io latency so to reduce io latency you can go for compression and compression will uh, highly so uh, io latency is the main uh, <clears throat> main uh, disadvantage or main drawback between uh, like to achieve high performance and it can be reduced with you know, data compression sequential data writes is uh, data awards random data uh, random disk access so in kafka all the data access is sequential that that makes it very uh, useful and you can use other side effect of that is you can use magnetic disks and you don't need to use a solid state disk uh, to store your data writes to immutable commit log no slow disk seeking no random io operation because there are no random io operation the performance becomes very very uh, predictable a disk access in sequential manner as we have seen horizontally scale is without incurring any downtime you can basically add more nodes to a kafka cluster uh, it works in uh, there are n number of nodes which distribute the load and you can add nodes without having any downtime uh, to scale out kafka and partitions uh, then assigned across so basically the data is partitioned when stored on kafka and that allows to add more nodes without having downtime because when you add more nodes those data part some of the data partitions uh, handled by some of the current servers will be uh, hand over to the new server in the background and the clients will mostly not notice the change uh, low latency is as, as we have seen it's very uh, built for very, very high performance kafka is capable of handling messages with uh, very low latency and it, it is also in the range of milliseconds and demands by most of the new use cases nowadays So how, how do we compare with some of the traditional messaging queues? So in traditional queuing systems, uh, discard messages, most queuing systems discard the messages after it has been processed from the end of the queue. So this is changed. The big Kafka has persistent storage. Even when a message is processed, it will persist for uh, some time and they don't get removed as consumers receive them. So, and it, it, it can be very useful in some uh, use cases. 
the traditional systems uh, are work in first in first out manner so the consumer is just uh, first in first out based reading from the head and processing sequentially so in traditional systems you can only process data sequentially in kafka there is data replication on multiple machines for reliability and in kafka you can because of the data partitioning you can alter the order uh, of data messages uh replicate events and basically you can distribute the message consumption and processing as well there uh replication some some traditional systems do not replicate events so that that is a bit of a, a drawback because replication gives you uh, very good re resilience against failures kafka does that uh handling of failures because cluster can handle broker failures automatically a stream processing is not possible with some of the traditional systems but uh, with kafka stream processing is like a native feature and scalability is very very uh, scalability is is a feature that that makes the most difference even a small cluster can process a large volume of messages with very high throughput uh, both real time and batch consumption and uh, with data retention some of the use cases uh, are messaging uh, of course because it's a log message bus metrics uh, for storing your metrics and uh, the metrics consumption by various systems website activity tracking log aggregation so log aggregation is also a very good use case for kafka stream processing event sourcing as we have seen in the microservices architecture and as a commit log for any transactional activity uh some good good application by some big players uh, there oracle spotify twitter uber netflix all of all of these companies have very big kafka deployments yeah as we have seen this so now we are going to uh, get a bit, bit of uh, test of what exactly is kafka we have talked a lot about the application and advantages and all the other things uh it's a distributed commit log uh, publish and subscribe of streams or records so there are producers and there are consumers so producer is some process which is producing data to the system consumer is a process very simple which is consuming the data and brokers are uh, the nodes or servers uh, which participate in in the system kafka itself uh those are because it's a messaging system it those are called as brokers uh, brokers or nodes are the terminologies used interchangeably here and stream processors are something which subscribe to some of this data and process as data comes so those are stream processors so producers consumers and stream processors could be called as clients of of a kafka system and brokers are uh, form the system itself uh, fault tolerant storage because brokers uh, store all the data on disk uh, and not in memory that's why it becomes fault tolerant and then there is data replication replicate topic log partitions to multiple servers so one set of data is called as a single topic in kafka and topic is a unit of uh, data production and consumption in kafka so some producer will generate some data and produce some data to a topic and consumer will consume a data from a topic now uh, streaming is process records as they occur as i said fast efficient uh, io batching compression and more and decouple data systems because of this the decoupling is is greatly achieved yeah so enterprises before kafka used to have this we have seen it in the linkedin example after kafka it, it simplifies uh, a lot so some of the fundamentals now we are going to see the technical aspects uh, so so basic the basically you have records or messages so each record or a message uh, which a producer produces or a consumer consumes has a key a value and a timestamp so these three fields are there by default uh basically timestamp is when the, the record was produced uh and then there are a couple of more timestamp entities there when when the record was processed if you are using streaming terminology but in simple terminology in simple uh, kafka use case 
time stamp is when a, a, a record was produced and your data can be uh, distributed like split into key and a value pair because it is easy to manage key value pairs uh, it is advisable to use key value or, or you can just use a value field and key can be automatically generated by kafka a topic as i said is a stream of records for example orders could be a topic so each order is a record and it is produced to a topic called as orders and then it would be consumed by some microservice and processed the, another example would be user signups so all the user signups uh, will be will become your messages or records those will be produced to this topic and those will be consumed by consumers from here a log is a uh, topic stored on disk so when the topic is stored on disk it is called as log and it essentially works as a commit log from database terminology partitioning is because uh, imagine this stream of data or log is partitioned or or subdivided uh, so the topics are divided into fixed number of partitions among which the records are divided so this is done to enable distributed processing producer is produces a stream of records uh, consumer as we have seen consumes a stream of record broker is kafka server that runs in a cluster so broker actually is one server participating in a cluster cluster is a group of brokers uh, let's say three or or n number of brokers and it is called as a kafka cluster so kafka one kafka system or a deployment is a cluster which consists of one or more brokers or n number of brokers uh, generally more than one to take the advantage of distributed processing and all the features that we have seen so that that makes all the uh, basic uh, entities or terminologies in kafka and one more terminology which is very important is zookeeper zookeeper basically is a different product which is used to coordinate brokers with the cluster so zookeeper is a separate apache product which is generally used with distributed systems for managing some of the metadata and leadership election and those kind of things so basically in nutshell it 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 is used for better coordination between the brokers which form a single cluster so yeah we will see all the terminologies one by one now uh, how does a kafka message look like it's very simple it is basic unit of data in kafka is a message also known as a record message is a key value pair all data is stored in kafka as byte arrays so kafka basically doesn't uh, view the data as data types or uh, of a specific uh, kafka views always views data as uh, byte arrays then producer produces serial uh, provide serializer to convert the key and value to byte arrays so when a da uh, some data is produced uh, so if you are familiar with java terminology the data is serialized to convert key and value into byte arrays and key and value can be of any data type so those can be of any normal data type so uh, metadata would be there uh, for each this is how a, a message looks like it has these three parts first is metadata uh, it will say what topic this message belongs to what partition within the topic this particular message belongs to and the timestamp of the the message so this is the metadata which is included in the header then the body part is key and value so this is the actual data for this message and it is subdivided into key and value a topic the second terminology so with this picture it, it becomes more clear a topic is category or feed name to which record are published topic in kafka are always multi subscriber so multiple subscribers can subscribe to a single topic that is a topic can have zero one or many subscribers that subscribe to the data written to it each partition so a topic is divided into partitions and each partition is an ordered immutable sequence of record that is continually appended to a structured like a structured commit log so basically each topic will be subdivided in into into partitions and each partition will be having the records in sequence 
a partition is nothing but a directory of log files so in in physical or technical terminologies it it's just a directory of log files the records in a partition are each assigned a sequence id number so this is for, to facilitate kafka's internal processing uh, which is called as offset that uniquely identifies each record within the partition so how do you distinguish from a record from each other so that's why kafka assigns a sequential id number and that id is called as offset and which is used uh, for for some very good uh, coordination between produce, producers and consumers we will see so producers what what is a producer a producer which uh, as as the name suggest pushes mess messages to a kafka topic uh, as each topic is divided in partitions and each write to a partition is handled by leader replica so the data is replicated but one of those uh, replica uh, replicas will be leader and others will be followers there are multiple broker involved into writing to a topic so each uh, replica of the data will be ideally handled by a separate broker and one of them would be a leader for that particular replica a producer directly writes to broker which holds the leader replica so the producer will only talk with the leader replica and the replication of message will be taken care by kafka automatically internally producer can use batching to send batches of records with efficiency so as we have seen to to efficiently uh, do the data transmission uh, the data will be batched and then a batch of data will be sent instead of individual messages producer can be written in any language like native java c++ python go and scala uh, java and scala are basically the languages in which uh, kafka is written but it is not limited to that the clients like producer and consumer could be written in any of these languages clients for many other languages exist yeah uh, command line producer also exists to send messages just to test and debug so in real world we can imagine uh, connected cars like iot or financial transactions or hospital emr record or log shipping logistical shipping can can be producers which write data to kafka and once some data is written it will get an acknowledgement that this data is is submitted to kafka and th that point onwards the data the, uh, kafka will guarantee the durability of data uh, are there any questions lined up uh, christoph until this point yes anup Oh, sorry, I'm just eating. Um, there was a bunch of questions. I think I handled them all. Okay. Um, it was about um, language support, mm -hmm. uh, rebalancing when you add more nodes. Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple of other questions, but um, yeah, all I good. think it's all good. Okay, thank you. So I'll I'll keep moving on. Kafka consumers on the other side is a consumer pulls messages from one or more Kafka topics. The consumer requests a micro batch of records. As producer is producing by batching the records, consumer will also consume the messages by batching. The broker uses offset to provide latest record to consumer. Uh, so the offset that we have talked about will be will be used here. So this particular consumer has consumed until this particular offset. consumer offset is stored in special kafka topic so there is one more specialized topic to track offsets and consumers used by kafka consumer offset keeps track of latest message read uh, because kafka does not delete record immediately after they are read consumers may reset the offset to previous value to replay the record so this is very important so if you want to read some record again you can change the offset for your consumer so some of the real world example could be reports or dashboards or insights or processes consumer can consume basically records and and produce this kind of uh, value out of it the, the, that is the the basically meaning of this particular diagram consumer will always pull uh, to kafka kafka will not push data and once data is available consumer will pull data kafka topic partition and offset so how does it look like when we uh, uh, pictorially design and like sh show a partition and offset 
So these are the messages which were produced. This there are two consumers. Producer is producing num message number twelve. Each each message has its own sequence number. Consumer this consumer has consumed messages until this offset number nine. So the offset for this becomes nine. This consumer has consumed until offset eleven reads. So this part is reading and this part is writing. Very very simple. Very very elegant. So moving on with Kafka brokers. So Kafka cluster is made up of multiple Kafka brokers. Each broker has an ID. So each broker is given an ID uh, so that this can, those can be distinguished. Broker contains topic lock partition. So all, all the Kafka brokers do the same job. There is no master and slave uh, for, for cluster operations. There are some duties which are, uh, for example, leadership election, which are taken care by some of the broker. But that duties are also distributed. So there is no single point of failure for Kafka no, broker. Connecting to one broker bootstrap client to entire cluster. So uh, your producer or consumer can just connect to one broker and then it, it can know about all the all the other brokers. And it in production starts with at least three broker and can scale out to many more. So at least three brokers should be used and then you can scale out to many more. So uh, use three brokers initially, which forms a cluster and three zookeeper, let's say, uh, then you can increase it in degrees of tens or hundred, even hundreds of brokers. And you don't need to scale out zookeeper because this is just a metadata service for coordination. Uh, you can use three and maximum five number of zookeeper uh, for efficient performance. Uh, there are some more terminologies like Kafka cluster failover and ISR. So ISR is in sync replica basically. So redundancy is topic partition can be replicated across multiple brokers for failover. So there is a replication uh, terminology here. Topic should have uh, a replication factor of at least two or three. So general replication factors used are two or three. Failover is if one or more Kafka broker fails, then a failover happens. The remaining Kafka broker that are in state of in sync replica can serve data. So what, what do we mean by shortly by in sync replica is when a producer writes some data to a partition, uh, it will be written to a leader partition and the replicas will copy the data and there is a degree of uh, lag between the producer like the leader replica and the follower replica so if the lag becomes very uh, the, the lag increases uh, above a given threshold that particular replica is called as not in synchronization with the leader replica so uh, to be to able to be participate in a failover scenario a replica a given replica needs to be synchronized with the uh, in sync with the leader replica so that it can be considered as a as a valid replica basically anoop <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just going to uh, to pause you for for one minute yeah. so, but I, i'm not sure everyone has access to the question and answer so i'm just going to go through the, the few questions we had and uh i'll give them my, my answer <coughs> so what did we had okay well, <laughs> one question was about the slides Yes, we will share the slide. Um, we will uh, send them to Stefan uh, by the end of the week. So they should be available uh, early next week. I don't know how Stefan will share them, but I'm sure there is a, there is a way. Yeah, no problem. Sounds good. Uh, then there was a question about Kafka and the support for Python. So the answer is yes, Python is, is, is one of the language that are supported as well as Go, C, C++, uh, Java, and Scala, obviously. <coughs> now, there was a, um, it's not a follow-up question, but it's, it's also relevant. There was a question about um, Python support for Kafka streams, which obviously is, is a bit of a separate uh, as Kafka. It's, it's a different component. And it's true that Kafka streams really focus natively on, on GVM language, so Java and Scala. <coughs> it doesn't have, as far as I know, native support for Python. Um, Seems like there is a bunch of uh, open source projects on GitHub that provides this uh, this support. Uh, I don't have any experience, and I haven't heard anyone using it, mostly because most of the customer we work with, you know, work with Java, I guess. 
Uh, but if anyone has experience with uh, any project in Python to work with Kafka streams, uh, feel free to uh, share that in the in the chat uh, so we can have a discussion uh, a bit later. Uh, and there was another question, how Kafka handles the horizontal scaling. And yes, uh, it's, it's doing that by rebalancing the partitions. So partitions are going to be reassigned and rebalanced uh, obviously, you need to have a high number of partitions to, to make sure that it's going to be balanced across multiple nodes, uh, but that, that's how it works. Um, unless you have something to add to my answers, Anoop, I think you are good to continue. Yeah, uh, no worries. Uh, thanks, Christopher, for all the answers. I think you have covered them well. Yeah. So let's move on and, and let's talk a little bit about Zookeeper because it's a very essential component of, of Kafka. It helps with leadership election mainly of Kafka broker. So who, who should be a leader uh, for a given partition among all the replicas is decided by like Zookeeper helps in that process. A uh, topic um, partition pairs, yeah. Manages service discovery for Kafka brokers that form the cluster. So where are all the brokers and their addresses and their metadata is all handled by Zookeeper. Send changes to Kafka cluster. So when all this activity happens, for example, new broker will join or a broker, existing broker dies or a topic is removed or added. All that activity is uh, triggers Zookeeper to perform uh, leadership election or rebalancing those are uh, the metadata is triggered by Zookeeper and it provides in sync view of Kafka cluster configuration to the clients as well. And Zookeeper itself works as a cluster. So uh, generally there are three nodes in a Zookeeper cluster or five nodes. It should be an uh, odd number of nodes in a Zookeeper cluster to avoid a split brain scenario. So where there, there are three in this one, there are three Zookeeper nodes. Uh, which form uh, itself is a cluster and then they will work as a distributed system and Zookeeper itself had some redundancy and even if one of the node or one of the Zookeeper node fail, uh, it can function properly without uh, losing service. So there is some re resilience to failure and redundancy built in for Zookeeper as well because itself is a distributed system. Uh, now some now a Kafka overview, or, or uh, it's a nice pictorial representation of uh, how you can visualize Kafka. There are producers, uh, generally, uh, let's imagine there are processes which generate data, and then there are processes which need to consume that data. And Kafka, then there is a Zookeeper cluster, as we have seen, which is connected to Kafka and enables Kafka to function. In Kafka cluster, we have brokers, so brokers form a single Kafka cluster or a single Kafka deployment or a system. Producer directly connect to brokers uh, to produce data. Uh, data is distributed or, or uh, is segregated in data structures called as topics. And those topics are replicated. Uh, those topics are partitions and those partitions are replicated across brokers. Sometimes uh, some broker is not available. So that particular replica becomes uh, offline. And then consumers also directly connect with broker for each piece of data uh, belonging to each specific topic. Consumers also, consumers can work in a group for enabling distributed fashion or distributed processing at, at consumer side, or they, there can be a single consumer. And the topics are not handled by a single broker. Those are distributed. As you can see here, topic B is handled by both of these brokers. Uh, so it, overall Kafka ecosystem looks like this. Uh, Kafka cluster, uh, there are brokers and Zookeeper is, is assisting them to be alive and, and work function properly. Uh, producers push messages, consumers pull messages and consumers can work independently or they can work in a group to process data from a single topic. And yeah, so then there could be multiple producers for multiple topics, for example, web page, web services, and they are producing two different, different topics. 
uh, logs, adapter, uh, and proxy. And consumers could be uh, other systems, which are uh, like technically speaking, you can connect consumers to NoSQL databases, Spark, Hadoop, or data warehouses. Uh, 